Hey there, my name is Cameron, also known as Venus Theory, and welcome back to another Multiphonics tutorial. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at sequencers and clocks inside of Multiphonics, which as you can imagine are great for sequencing things, whether that's a rhythmic or melodic sequence, as well as synchronizing different aspects of your patches, or even synchronizing things like an LFO or a delay. Here we are with Multiphonics, and first off, we've got a basic patch, and I've brought in the gate and CV sequencer. So first, let's get this wired up. Let's take the pulse output and wire that to the gate input of the ADSR, and then we'll take the CV out and use that to determine something like, let's say, pitch. Now, we'll enable these steps by clicking the orange button. That opens up an LED, which indicates that that step is currently active. With all of that done, we can now click the clock button to start advancing through the sequence. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that you probably don't want to click the clock button every single time you want to advance a step in your sequence because that would just be insane. We're probably going to want something to do that for us. In this case, let's bring in an LFO. And to visualize this, let's bring in the level visualizer as well. If we take the square wave output of the LFO and bring that into the level input here, we'll see that jumps up and down 5 volts, up and down and up and down and up and down at regular intervals, so we can use this as a clock source. As long as something is over 2 volts, it can be used to advance the clock. So let's wire the square wave output into the clock input of the gate and CV sequencer, and we should see it going through the steps at regular intervals. As you can probably guess, the rate would then determine the tempo. And that's pretty much all there is to it. But unless you're some kind of human calculator, you probably don't want to set your tempo in hertz. To get something that's a bit more musician friendly going for tempo, we can instead use the master clock module here at the top right of Multiphonics. So let's get rid of the LFO and this level visualizer for now. The master clock module has a couple of different controls. First off, we have the tempo output. Above that is the tempo knob, which we use to set the tempo. We've got the reset and play outputs. Above that is the play button, even with an external play input. Then we've got the swing knob to add swing, the clock, which adds a clock divider, which means we can just divide the clock signal on different musical intervals, and then the clock output. If you're running Multiphonics as a plugin in your DAW as well, you'll see the sync button with external and internal options. Ext External will lock Multiphonics tempo to your DAW, and if you set it to internal, this allows you to set the tempo with the tempo knob, making Multiphonics independent of your DAW. Going back over to the gate and CV sequencer module, we'll see we have a clock input in the lower left. So we could probably take this clock output of the master clock and wire it in, and as we would probably expect, if we hit play, the sequencer runs. Now if we pause, it will stop the sequencer, and now you can see we've stopped on step 3. If we play it again, and stop. Now we've stopped on step five. So the thing here is that we might want this to reset every time we hit play. And in order to do that, we'll take the reset output of the master clock and wire that to the reset input of the gate and CV sequencer. Now every time we hit play, no matter where we stop, it's going to reset back to the start every single time. One really fun idea in the world of modular is to use two different clock signals within the same patch. Here, I've got a patch that has two different layers. This first layer is the exact same thing we were just using. I duplicated that down, but then I brought in another clock module to control this lower layer. If we give this a play right now, we'll see this top layer is set to 110 BPM, and that's gonna come out over here on the left. Then this bottom layer is set to 120 BPM, and that's gonna come out over here on the right. Now we could play both of these at the same time. And we have kind of a desynced polyrhythmic patch. Now, we might want both of these to start playing at the same time to get something a little bit more usable out of this. If we take a look at the clock module, we'll see we actually have an external play input here above the play button. On the master clock, we have the play output. So we could take the play output and feed that into the play input here of the lower clock module. And now, 
we've got our polyrhythmic patch with both of them starting at the exact same time. Another idea you might want to explore is syncing up the tempo of multiple clocks, but doing something a little bit different. If we take a look at the master clock, we have the tempo output here, and on the clock module, we have an external tempo input. So let's wire the tempo output to the tempo input here, and now we can give this a play and we'll see both of these are set to 110 BPM. But for something a little bit more interesting, we could take the length, which controls the number of steps in the sequence, and we'll set this lower layer to have seven rather than eight. If we give this a play now, we'll have kind of a cool polymetric thing going on, because this lower layer having only seven steps sort of drifts in and out of that perfect rhythm, but eventually sinks back up. If we get rid of the external tempo input, we could get something really wild going on and have a polymetric and polyrhythmic patch going on at the same time. And this can be really interesting to experiment with, with things like drone or ambient soundscape patches. Before you run off on your merry way with your sequencers and clocks, I do wanna show you one more thing here, which is synchronizing different aspects of a patch like an LFO or a delay. Let's bring in the LFO module here and let's set this to our filter cutoff. Maybe we'll just do something like the square wave output for now. If we give this a play, things really aren't synced up here. The LFO isn't really following what's going on with that filter. But if we take the tempo output of the master clock and feed that into the rate input and set the modulation to 100% positive, and then we'll give this another play. Now it's synced up. We could tweak that a little bit, get different values. Set that back to the center here. But you'll notice if we change our tempo, This LFO will follow the tempo, so that's a really great way to start building patches that have tempo synced aspects that you don't need to readjust every time you open that preset. Because this is now synced with the tempo, we can actually just load this up no matter what our tempo is in our patch or in our DAW, and it's going to follow it. There are lots of ways you can expand on these ideas, but we're gonna leave that part up to you. You could try using the tempo to sync up your ADSRs. You could try using it to sync up a slew limiter. You could do all sorts of other interesting things to create some fun, weird time-based effects and patches inside of Multiphonics. That wraps everything up for this video, so thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something. Be sure to subscribe to the channel down below for more Multiphonics tutorials like this one coming your way very soon. And of course, to check out Multiphonics for yourself today or find more information, you can head over to Apply to Acoustics.com.